Today on The Spiel. We're here to talk about his new film called Summertime, and we're here with Carlos Lopez Estrada. With a thinly sliced chicken breast like this, you really need to go no more than minute, minute and a half on each side. I know I'm doing fine on my own. For uh, my song 32 Degrees, we did a music video and I was actually getting the tattoo in the music video. So that was real. It <laughs> yeah, it was it real. And we want to thank you for tuning in today, whichever day it may be. Sometimes we're on Saturday morning. Sometimes we try a Sunday slot. We want you watching online because I know that folks want the content when they want it, how they want it. So YouTube is where it's at. You can actually go to the spiel on YouTube and binge watch. I mean, I've done it. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, here's a word that's been thrown around a lot lately. Greatness, the goat, you know, and how do you achieve that? I feel like, and the discussion here at the Spiel has been, oh, well, you just stumble into that, or maybe you're born into that. But let me tell you, very rarely is greatness achieved when it's a great day, when it's an easy walk in the park. That comes through adversity and meeting those challenges in life and not necessarily letting your past define your future, but greatness is accomplished when you come through those challenges, you come through those tough times, and you do something that not only makes a difference, you know, in other people's lives, but also yours. And Prescott Dahl, a fan favorite here at the Spiel, recently took a trip to Indiana to see a lifelong friend, I guess. Yeah. Right? Okay. The, the thing about Prescott that we need to just go ahead and get out there, when Prescott came to interview with us, bow tie mask, sleeves down to here, and I mean like a, a shirt like this, buttoned up, like really clean cut, you know, he's just that very polite young man, his parents have done a great job, and then we had the casual Friday, and he comes in, and I mean, he has lovely artwork all over your body. Yep. All over your body. <laughs> now, your dad was not a fan, but your mom is okay with it? So, uh, yeah, they're okay with it. But in the beginning, if they could go back, they would probably take those choices of mine away. <laughs> but they're just happy that they look good and right. they're well done. Right. So tattoos, people get them for a number of reasons. You know, whether you're a fan or you're not, some people do it for strength, for encouragement, as a reminder of something. Mm -hmm. What was it for you? Uh, when it started, my first one is just across my chest. You only get one chance to be someone. So it's just like a, a good mantra to live by. Okay. And then ever since then, like all of my friends, like they work in the industry and they were like, hey, you have really cool ideas. I'd like to do that. And then it's just, it just sucked me in. Yeah. Well, there is a really cool friend of yours and we're taking a look now at her shop in Indiana. Um, not only does she have people just lined up out the door to get in, but when she opens her calendar, you say that she's booked within a matter of minutes for months. Yeah, it's just like, she's in such demand. Her work is unparalleled. It's so, it's just unique is the best way to describe it. When you see it, like most people are like, oh my gosh, I've never yeah. seen work like that. And she moves fairly quickly. She gets a lot done in a short amount of time. Yeah, she does. And she's that safe place you talk about that, you know, a lot of women have chosen to go to her because maybe they stumbled into the wrong shop one day and she makes everybody feel comfortable. It's just a shop where you can be you. Yeah. There's no like weird pressure. It's just a laid back environment mm -hmm. and everybody's just happy to be there and they're welcoming you. Yeah. Give her a shout out. What's her name? Her name is Amber Olson, and her tag is Art by Amber Olson okay. and Instagram, and I believe that's her Facebook tag as well. Okay, and she's been featured in like all of the major publications, um, Inked, 
Yeah, she's been in Ink uh, Magazine before. But I know that uh, she's like her popularity on Instagram yeah. has just gotten up there, and I've seen her work like on other people's feeds. And she's using her following and her popularity for a wonderful cause. You know, the line around the building that says a lot because that particular day, a portion of the proceeds went to something pretty darn important. Yeah, so that day it was an event called Still Not Asking For It, mm. and it's ran on the second Sunday in June, and any shop can be a part of it. You just have to register with the event, and the proceeds go towards like the family center in St. Joe, right? and it's for people who have been victims of sexual violence or mm. assault, mm. and it gives them resources to get the help that they need yeah. to overcome it, and it also raises the level of accountability in communities. That is awesome. I mean, talk about a woman with a talent and now doing, you know, great things um, with that and with those works and kudos to her. Kudos to you for going to do that and, and film that. And I know your friend is very thankful. Oh yeah. It Did was... you give her the video? You're like, oh yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm still giving her content. I'm still putting it together. <laughs> All right. Well, we have some pretty cool guests coming up today. Some incredible artists. You guys have asked for diversity. You want some young, some older, some different genres. So we're going to have all of that for you as the spiel continues. Stay right there. Hey, there's still a lot more of this show to come. We only had the summer to put it together, which means that we had four months to conceive, write, structure, pre-produce, and shoot the movie. Coming up later. I'm gonna show you what, what, you, what you're gonna miss if you wanna leave. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Estilos, and I'm here with Carlos Lopez Estrada, who made his directorial debut with 2018's Blind Spotting. And more recently, he directed Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon. But today, we're here to talk about his new film called Summertime, and we're here with Carlos. Carlos, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Tim, thank you so much for having me. I have to tell you, I really enjoyed this film. It's so unique in the process and the way it's put together. It involves sort of a day in the life of Los Angeles as told through the eyes of 27 youth poets. Tell me how this unique project came together. I went to see a spoken word showcase with all 27 of these poets. And I remember just walking out of that experience feeling really changed uh there, there was something about their voices there was something about their poetry so i came back a few days later to the director of the organization and i proposed this idea of adapting their poetry into a film little did i know that a few months later we were going to be all workshopping this this film together and because the poets were all most of them were graduating high school and about to start college we only had the summer to put it together, which means that uh, I met them in April. We had May, June, July, and August, uh, four months to conceive, write, structure, pre-produce, and shoot the movie, which is, you know, uh, very unusual. Tell us what this film is all about, because it's very unique in the structure of it and the fact that you just had these poets to basically tell the story. What type of story are they telling? prompt that we gave them was this is a movie that's going to take over one day in los angeles 
And we want you to bring, each of you is going to write and perform your individual scenes. We're going to put the whole thing together. So once we have all the scenes, we're going to find ways of connecting them and structuring the film. And then we spend the next few months just trying to piece this giant puzzle together. They're also bringing a very unique perspective to this film because they're telling their stories as young people in Los Angeles, which is not always an easy place to navigate, whether it's seeking a career or just living life in Los Angeles. What I I love the most about the movie is that it shows you LA through perspectives that we don't really get to see very often. This is really the city as captured through 27, really diverse, really layered and complex points of view. So I, I, I hope that people who watch the movie walk away with a different understanding of LA and, and hopefully one that is really inspiring and, and uh, really diverse. Now, for you as a Mexican-American director, you know, we've, we've all spoken uh, about how it's hard to get Latino stories told. How has your experience been? And uh, perhaps what hope do you have for that improving? The real hope is that in, in telling stories like Summertime, in, in highlighting voices like the poets, we, we contribute to this really important conversation that is happening around representation and around diversifying our, our industry, just because the stories that that we capture in this movie are important, are necessary, and should deserve all of the focus and attention that any other type of story from LA has gotten for a really, really long time. So I, I hope that we're contributing to a movement that will sort of like change the way that representation in film uh, is understood. I, I, I hope that by me being the director and producer of the movie by having all these uh, writers as stars and as authors of the film. I hope that we just continue to push this, uh, this ball forward and, and people just find less and less excuses to not support uh, stories coming from minority communities. Final quick question for your quick answer. Give your best pitch to the audience out there why they should see this film. <laughs> uh, I think they should see this movie because it is a city as captured by 27 different young voices. And I feel like the the empathy that it, ge- it should generate, hopefully generates in audiences is empathy that is very needed today. I feel like, I feel like opening up our perspectives and allowing other angles to shape how we see the world uh, is probably one of the more important things that we can do. And hopefully this movie does that. So for, for that reason alone, uh, I, I think that it's, it's a worthwhile experience today. The film is called Summertime, so be sure to go out and see it. Thumbs up. Coming up later on The Spiel. But it could be kind of fun to fall in line with someone But first... My name is Cameron Yusanovich. I am happy to be here with CRHPC. I I grew up in these communities. I went to school just 10 minutes away. I live in Christopher, where Ray Clinic is located now. So I myself, as a family nurse practitioner here at Christopher Ray Clinic, will be working later hours, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's hard to get in from that 9 to 5 or that 8 to 4 slot. And what I want to tell my patients is that um, I'm going to give them 110% of my all, my best. And they're going to know that they're going to leave here happier and hopefully healthier.
welcome back to another five minutes of movements. So I'm going to start on all fours and I am going to go opposite arm is leg and pull them into each other and have them tap. I'm going to do about 10 on each side. So I always do to 10 to 12 reps three times through on each side. This is a really good for challenging your obliques. Next thing I'm gonna do is a side plank. And I am going to just lift. So point my toe to my knee and then extend. And then switch to the other side. Make sure I'm um, stable in that side plank and do the same thing. If you need to just hold that side plank and challenge yourself there, that's okay too. So here I call these curtsies, but just like a back lunge. Um, try to have your knees right behind each other and that back foot going to your diagonal or your corner and get really low. Try to even get that knee to touch the ground and keep your hips squared. So that is all I have for a solid core work. You can find all of my videos on the Spiel's YouTube. Like I always say every week, please start stacking these workouts on top of each other. I think they will definitely benefit you. Um, but if you can only get five minutes in, hey, you got five minutes in and that's just enough. Coming up on the Spiel, she has a small tattoo with a special meaning. From New Jersey, now in Nashville, St. Monet joins us on set. And he creates recipes using Prairie Farms products. More from corporate chef Rob later. You're watching The Spiel. As a pediatrician, my specialty is to provide medical care for children. Growing up, I always loved helping people and science and learning, and all three of those just go so well with the medical field. We have a nice new clinic and room for kids and adults. I'd say my drive is because I care so much about others. So being from Southern Illinois, I know it can be difficult to find the physician or the specialist that you need in our area. So I am happy to be here to be able to provide that care. Hey guys, if you like the show, follow us on all of our social media. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> now it's cute. The Spiel presents your on 100% original new music. Hi, I'm St. Monet, and this is my guitarist, John Byers. Um, today we're going to be performing my new single, In Line and In Love. It was released in June, and it's probably one of the favorite songs that I've ever released. It's about being fine on your own, but also having that backwards feeling of just wanting to be with someone, even though you're in a really good place in your life. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me, and I hope that you can resonate with it, too. Kind of fun 
Kiss in the parking lot on the hood of your car at the same stupid bar. You taste like two for one beer, kind of nice, kind of weird. It feels like home when we're here. Ooh, ooh, thinking I'm in heaven. You're a seven out of seven. Maybe that's the best that I can get. Ooh, ooh, maybe I'll regret this, but for now. There's a lot of things that veterans enjoy in their normal daily life, but they lose a lot of that when they're going through that PTSD. But the whole health aspect gives us options. It gives us options like maybe I don't have to take a pill for this. Maybe I can work on myself with, with meditation and with yoga. Giving your mind something to distract and interrupt those thoughts I think is important and that's what the whole health team helps you do. So it's really about giving control and power back to somebody when they're already feeling powerless. St. Monet in her first ever television appearance. Yes. And so you did excited great. to be yes. here. Thank yes. you for having me. You know, you're a New Jersey girl. You've come a long way. You, you came to us via Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have such a great, vibrant, young, relatable <laughs> sound. Um, and, and I guess they're calling it, is it soul pop? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I take inspiration from soul, like Aretha Franklin I love, mm -hmm. but also just trying to experiment with every genre. Okay. Yeah. You've been doing this for a while. You're trained in classical piano for 16 years. Mm -hmm. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, it was a long time, lots of practice, many hours. <laughs> practice that you wanted to go to, or you're like, mom, I'm not, no, I don't want to practice, or? At first, it was definitely kind of like pulling teeth. Right. Um, but then I kind of, once you get past the, the technical parts and you start to really understand the piano, it yes. becomes really fun and then yes. it was kind of on me to pursue Absolutely. a career. Absolutely. So the classical piano is much different than just the piano lessons that kids go to. I mean, what was it that you were trying to do through that or what was it that you discovered about yourself? Well, it definitely, it taught me discipline, 1,000%. Okay. I would practice like 10 hours a day and it was, you know, it wasn't always fun. Yeah. It was definitely, <laughs> there were some times where I was like, I wish I could just go to bed, but it taught me discipline and it gave me that background of technicality. And also it made me like have a real appreciation for instruments. Absolutely. So incorporating that into the music that we do now. Yeah. I love to try to like incorporate little classical bits into it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And your fans can look for that. Uh, your videos are a lot of fun to yes. watch. <laughs> uh, they're very relatable. Uh, a lot of talk of relationships and love mm -hmm. and I don't really need him or maybe I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that purposeful? Is that something that you just enjoy doing or is, or is there a reason that you're writing the way that you are? Yeah. So recently these past 
two releases and then we have two more coming out are kind of, they all follow the theme of love. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't intentional at first, but it's just, I've, I've always been, you know, too busy to have a relationship mm -hmm. or just like too focused on something else. And so I'm kind of like enamored by the idea of love because I don't have a lot of experience in it. And right. so the way to like kind of navigate that is by writing and it's really helped me navigate it, especially these four songs that are gonna be out. Nice. Yeah. So at the beginning of the show, we talked about tattoos and I see there's a number sequence on you. What yes. is this? So this is 973. That's the um, area code of where I'm from in Jersey. and. Okay. For uh, my song, 32 Degrees, we did a music video, and I was actually getting the tattoo in the music video. So that was real. It <laughs> yeah, wasn't, it was it real. No, okay. it was real. Yeah, it's on me forever. <laughs> Very cool. You yeah. Know. You, you say New Jersey, but where is the, the accent or where? It comes out when I'm driving or okay. like when I'm around my parents. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. It's definitely some things I say like water and like married. Okay. It comes out or when I'm angry. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, listen, great job. We most certainly want your fans to follow you, so maybe yes. give them some guidance there. Yes, well, you can follow me on all social media platforms. It's at Saint Monet, and Saint is spelled S-E-I-N-T-M-O-N-E-T. -E and yeah, keep a lookout. I have a lot more music and videos and just merch and everything coming, so keep a lookout. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, and we'll be right back. He's our resident drummer, and we issue a challenge for Daniel later in the show. Follow Prairie Farm for recipes sure to amaze any guest. He's a worldly chef, and we have him coming up on The Spiel. I'm Bailey James, this is 316, and you're watching The Spiel. Chef Rob down in the kitchen doing a little chicken dish so we can do what we French call a la minute or all at once. Okay, today I'm gonna to be using some chicken breasts that I've sliced into scallopinis, some Prairie Farms butter, little olive oil, some mushrooms, white wine, chicken stock, a little bit of chopped shallot, and the star of the show will be Prairie Farms heavy cream. Okay, so let's get at it. First thing we wanna do is we wanna cook our mushrooms and we wanna melt down a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon, and then just a small blob of olive oil. That helps keep the butter from burning. We wanna start with cooking our mushrooms because they're gonna take the longest. They're gonna take four, maybe five minutes with this method. Okay. Now that we've got our, our butter melted down, tip in our mushrooms. So we'll just let these go just a little bit. While we're working on that, my chicken doesn't come seasoned, so I'm gonna put a little bit of salt some fresh black pepper that I ground. And it's real important that we season both sides. Okay, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna sage these. We wanna put just a little bit of all-purpose flour on each of these scallopini. Okay, now I'm going to take the uh, mushrooms out and I'm gonna just put them off to the side. And now we are going to cook our scallopini. Okay. And really with a thinly sliced chicken breast like this, you really need to go no more than a minute, minute and a half on each side. I know that sounds strange, but these are so thin that uh, it really goes fast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get a nice color on this, start the chicken to be cooked through, and we'll turn it and we'll start building our sauce, okay? After we build our sauce, we'll return the chicken to finish the cooking in that sauce. So now, we're gonna add even more butter. And I've got a couple tablespoons of finely minced shallots here. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna just take the chicken out. Now we're gonna start building our sauce. You can see that we have what the French call la fond, the base of our sauce here, these little brown bits. That's where most of the flavor from the chicken has gone. So now we want to scrape that up a little bit by adding about a quarter of a cup of white wine, okay? So now we'll go to the second layer of our sauce, which is uh, about a third of a cup of chicken stock. Get that heat back up and we'll throw our chickens back in and the mushrooms and any accumulated juices, as we say. Okay. And we'll cut our heat back just a little bit. We want the chicken broth to reduce just a little bit. We're gonna turn our heat down all the way down to low and we're gonna add a little over a half cup of cream, it looks here. And we'll stir that in and bring it back up just till it simmers a little bit and thickens. Now we wanna see if our, our cream is done, our cream sauce is done. It's just a little bit thin. Technically, we wanna do this to the nape stage, which if we run our finger across the spoon there and it doesn't drip, okay, it's still just a little bit drippy. We'll let her go just a minute. One of my favorite things to do is when I'm in France or really anywhere, when I go through these old chateaus and I look at the kitchen and I think about how those men and women cooked down there. They didn't have thermometers, they didn't have temperature gauges, they didn't have um, degrees balmé, they didn't have all this technical stuff that we have at our disposal today. So they had to come up with ways to just visualize things. And that nape uh, translates to a certain temperature. Okay? I believe it's 84 degrees Celsius but let's give it a test. Okay, looks good. Didn't run at all. All right, so we've got a plate here that we're going to lay our scallopini. Oh, let's kind of cross them here. And then we'll find some, some of the mushrooms. This is looking really good, okay? And then we'll just spoon some of the sauce over. My favorite is to use a little chopped tarragon from my herb pots at home. Here I just had a little bit of parsley. Just sprinkle that on. And there you've got a quick chicken with mushroom and cream sauce. For this recipe and more, check out prairiefarms.com. I sit down with Bailey James. There's still so much to learn about her. Stay tuned. In the military, we're always taught to push forward, to push through the pain. You're always taught to focus on the goal. They feel that they have renewed hope. Their stress and anxiety are decreased. A lot of them have made comments that they are even sleeping better. It taught me to make time for myself. You may see challenges in your life, but you have that stability and knowing who you are and where it is that you are in relation to what it is that's going on around you. Hey y'all, I'm Bailey James. This is my band 316. And today we are actually gonna be playing an unreleased song called Leave Me the Right Way for Y'all. Show 
So you told us last time you were here that you would be back and you would be back with your band. And I brought them, all three of them. All three of Say them. Say hello, boys. Hello, boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> So 316, uh, yeah. I love this. They have a, um, a work ethic, if you will, or a commitment statement. Work hard, play hard, praise harder, inspired by belief. You obviously have a lot of trust and faith and belief in them if they're behind you there, right? I do. I have a lot. Of, they're amazing. And I have, before performances, I'm known for, they'll let you know, I'm known for going, okay, so let's play this song like you've never, ever heard it <laughs> ever in your life. Actually, a whole lot of love, Led Zeppelin. Right. Right. Yeah, but he, they do it, and they they're, do it. they're, they're just, amazing they at what it. they do. Yeah, but you introduce know, them. I, yeah, okay, so this is, <laughs> this is Maul. He only drinks water out of fine china. This is the, this is the baby. All right. He's the big teddy bear. No, I'm not a baby. Um, Very nice. He loves flirting with women. He's okay. a flirt. Very good. That's <laughs> not <laughs> um, And he is, he's just crazy. Okay. I love you. So I this is. A little crazy. This is That's Seth. It. Seth is the sane one, the Seth. mentally stable one of the group. Okay. Um, he's also the oldest, so that's probably why. But right. yeah, he's he's amazing, and he keeps us all stable. And then we have Adam, the diva. Whoa. The diva. Whoa. Okay. I think it's because he's a drummer. Is he? Okay. And maybe. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The diva. I don't know, but no, Adam's amazing. <laughs> Okay. I have a video of him uh, playing the drums and eating an ice cream cone at the same time. He was That's multitasking. That's talent. That is I talent. Want that video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go to break, but when we come back, we're going to catch up, okay? Yes. All right. Stay right there. It's the weekend and your symptoms are worsening. The morning of a big meeting and you have a bigger sore throat. Ever experienced that urgency after picking up your sick child and your community health center has already closed? You will be able to connect to a provider at crhpc.org. Even if you have never been to CRHPC, you are welcome to utilize our services. Feel better after scheduling a video visit with CRHPC. So your second time on the show, and I still feel like there's so much we don't know about you. Bailey James, she's like, Angie, you couldn't possibly know everything. You're too complex. You don't want to know everything, <laughs> trust me. You know, you have released now a song in every genre, is that right? Yes, every genre. Was that purposeful or just mm -hmm. happened? No, I just grew up on a lot of different music. Mm -hmm. I grew up on like Kurt Cobain and yes. Johnny Cash and Amy Winehouse and yes. like Slipknot. And so I kind of had like a very big range of music I got to listen to. And I was like, well, I want to be able to write all of that and release it. Yeah. So. I feel like they call you a teen sensation, but you most certainly have an old soul. It feels that way. Thank you. I, maybe a little bit in music. You in like music. to flirt with all of that in music. Yeah. Okay. In music, I flirt with it everywhere else. I'm 18. <laughs> Everywhere you know? else she's 18. Yeah. Did we know that you were a golden ticket recipient on American Idol? I Did we talk we about, that? about that? Let's. What was that like? That was, okay, so the funny thing was I went singing country music at that time. I was 15 and I remember walking into the room and like my adrenaline was so high. I don't even remember most of it. Really? No, but I, like when I went in, I sang, I put a spell on you in a song I had wrote for my brother called The One and... Katie was like, you should be singing soul music, not country. And um, Lionel also said the same thing. And Luke was the only one who gave me a no, which was funny. Luke yeah, so gave you a no? Luke gave me a no, so we don't listen to Luke in my household. We no, Luke. Gee. Bye, Luke. Bye. Yeah, so you just <laughs> alluded to your brother, and I absolutely love this story. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's one of those that... Um, captivates, but you've chosen to use his story, his legacy, mm -hmm. to help other people. Let's talk about your brother. Yeah, I lost my brother. Um, he took his own life when he was 18, and that was about five years ago. We were talking about my tattoo. Mm -hmm. I got this tattoo for him, to live amongst the flowers and forever be free. It's a poem he wrote. 
Um, and basically, I just try to bring awareness to teen suicide as much as possible. Um, I am a spokesperson for the Jason Foundation. Jason Foundation, yes. Talk uh, about that. Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, I've had so many amazing experiences alongside other people like uh, Rascal Flats and Charlie Daniels and mm -hmm. um, being able to talk to them about it because they're part of the foundation and just being able to bring light to that yes. situation was really important to me because I, even I think artists were just so highly sensitive. We struggle with our mental health from time to time. Sure, we all do. Yeah, we uh, all everyone, do. everyone. Tomorrow will be a better day and there are people out there who love you and care and man, if people would just reach out, you know yes. what I mean? As an alternative. That yeah, would... and they, they think it's like so taboo. When you talk, when I get on stage, I'm always like, I know this is, you know, a topic not most people want to hear about, but it's so important. It's so important, so important. no doubt. And you're you're doing great things through your music. Um, this finally free. What does what does that mean for you? What are you, what are you doing with that song? Well, I went through a breakup, and it was like my first real serious breakup. I I didn't like. Now looking back on it, it seems so minor mm -hmm. in the, the scheme of everything. But back then. We went to that right that day. It was me and my dad. I was like sobbing in the car. He's like, get it together. <laughs> like we need to get to this right and write this song. And yeah. I think it was more just me growing up and kind of evolving into who I really wanted to be. I started music at a super young age, mm -hmm. wrote some really cringy music that I'll never be able to take back. But it was it was amazing being able to evolve. And so now I'm like, I'm a grown woman and I know what I want and who I want to be, and that's yeah. finally free. Some really good lessons, though, if you listen to your music, um, yeah. you can tell you're going through some things. I mean, you yeah. wrote one for your brother, and you've it, just life's events as a whole. So I think that's why people turn to music, is how does it for relate sure. to me? For sure. We, we put our experiences into the music. Awesome. You know, you're just one to watch, no doubt. You're up to like 200,000 crazy followers now. I'm Not that your followers Thank are crazy, you. but it's a crazy number, and it's so much fun to watch you grow Thank and perform you. and um, you're just blossoming. Did you see the TikTok dance me and my mom did? Yes, I did see that. We, we're not we're not good dancers, <laughs> but like we really put our all into it. Awesome. So it was funny. All right, Bailey James, thank you so much. And how about your guys? Another round of applause yes. for the guys, everybody. The amazing boys. The 316 band, they are awesome. I mean, they only asked for just green M&Ms in their dressing room and like, you know, people to no fan them. No seltzer water. And, yeah, just, you know, I mean. They're, they're a little difficult, but they, I think they've earned it. They're they very good it. musicians. They're amazing. So. All right, thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate you. And we'll be right back. My dad came here in the early 50s and started. My name's John Smith. My brother Terry and I have Smith Dairy Farm. And we're producers of milk for Prairie Farms Dairy. And we're outside at 4.30 in the morning. Cows need fed 365 days a year, and you learn the mannerisms of each animal. You learn who they are. Prairie Farms, they depend on us to be finished milking at a time when the truck's going to come to get the milk. We're all one big team. Proudly farmer owned. It's part of what we've been raised to do. Prairie Farms. That was not three seconds. We talked about a three second intro. I was starting to get into it and That's I was like, That's the thing I with drummers, down. man. They just, you know, but <laughs> the drummers, man, you guys, would you say that you're the anchor of the band? I would say we're the heartbeat of a band. Oh, the heartbeat of the band. Well, yeah. I'm a fan, you know that. We have resident drummers here. We have Rob. Rob, do you need to come on set and take a bow as well? I know Rob and Daniel have the yeah, constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a, a bow from Ron. Okay. Um, but you guys, I mean, you're, you're animals on the drums. You both played at the same church, and I yeah. think that's where I saw you the first time. And you had a lot of hair, and you were... It might come back. Yeah? Oh, you were return. thinking about growing the hair? Is that just part of your drummer persona? No, it's more like one of those things that I just like it. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Um, I wanted to test your knowledge of the opposite sex in this musical okay. fascination. Okay. Top female drummer. 
I might say it wrong, but Akita Niles? No, not even close, no. Well, she's a beast. Is she? She's she's such a great coach. Uh -huh. um, she does a lot of YouTube, that's where I found her. Yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah, she's pretty, good. she's pretty great. And then there's this other one. She... Would it be Cindy Blackman? No. She's the number one female drummer. Really? Yes. So you're you're definitely not going to know this next name, which I'm. I, I might. thought I, I might. thought she was number one. Okay. You know Prince? Yeah. Sheila E. No. The whole floor, they're like, oh yeah. But she's a beast because oh, I've heard yeah. the music. The music's yes. phenomenal. Sheila E. with Prince and the Sign of the Times when she did the drum solo. I'm gonna show you that in just yeah, a yeah. second. But first of all, okay, the Cindy Blackman, okay, mm -hmm. back to her. So she really, her claim to fame was when she um, assisted Lenny Kravitz in his live band and just like headlines everywhere. That's so so cool. I, I happened to have her pulled up here. I want you to pay close attention. I'm gonna play this for you. Okay. And then I want you to pay really close attention to like the last 30 seconds and there's a reason for that. Okay. Okay. Wow, this is an old video. Look at the arms on this girl. Woohoo! Wow. Look how she holds the one drumstick. She never moves that. It's traditional. Okay, that's the traditional way of holding it. She's younger. All right, like this. She just does a nice little. That's a controlled fade out. How about that? Okay. That's beautiful. Now you gotta see, so you, you, you got that, right? Well, here we go. I'm gonna show you Sheila E. Sheila E. And there's a reason that I'm doing this. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get to that in just a second. Okay. All right, here she goes. Now watch this. Pay close attention, okay? Because these are performances I've never forgotten. You don't know who this is. Mm -mm. All right, hang on. We're gonna get you all the way. We're gonna get you here. This girl just That's goes sick. off. Watch her. She stands up. That's pretty awesome. I thought she was number one. I can't believe she's been surpassed. Even in that time, you never heard of Sony. Watch this. She throws the drumsticks and she's doing it with her hands. People are going <laughs> nuts. You hear me? Look at that crowd. Oh Prince my knew how to show, man. That's awesome. Do they have your respect? They, of course, of okay. course, you're playing with these epic, legendary people. And you are gonna play with them. So listen, ladies, I'm sure they're gonna love this. You get to choose which of those performances you'd like to emulate. Oh, no, no, I'm not on that level at all. You don't, you're not there? Uh, I mean, I, I could, it would take next me. Next show, the next show. Look, I was gonna put you on the spot and ask you to do it during the duration of this show, but I think we'll wait till the listen, next show. Listen, it would take hours of studying. I could do it. And I will say this, I could do it, but it would take studying. The last 15 seconds of either of their solos. Which one would you like? I don't know. Um, would you like to do the last 15 seconds of both of their performances? I'm gonna try. Okay, we're gonna try. Rob, how's that? That's good. The last 15 seconds of both of their performances. We're gonna try. I knew you'd accept it. We're gonna try. That is so awesome. Okay, you gonna play us out? Go crazy. Oh like, my your, gosh, like I mean, stuff. what can we... I don't even know how to compete. <laughs> I can't even compete. I mean, now he's stifled oh my ratings. gosh, I'm like <laughs> drum shy. You have stifled his creativity. Oh my god, oh, man. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Oh, that was awesome. Good work. Hey y'all, I'm Bailey James, this is 316. I'm going to be playing my newest single, Finally Free, which the Opry named Circle Song of the Week. I was so terrified Too scared to say 
newest single finally free which was recently named opry sing blah, 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 blah. i was stumbling over my words yes we're ready sorry boys get it together which the opry just uh named opry single oh my god <laughs> so apparently i'm in uh, the clothes i don't know what, i don't know what's going on So Bailey, oh, what did you think about this feel and how did you enjoy your time here? It was a lot of fun. I think the boys made the show because they're the actors and I'm just the singer. It was so much fun. We had so much fun. How many people does it take to do stuff? I don't know. Eleven. All right, we 
obviously it was your first time on TV. How how do you feel about it? Like, what were your feelings? I mean, obviously very nervous and excited, but it's a very welcoming place, and I felt really comfortable when I was up there. Look, content's content, and we'll be right back. <laughs>